Okay, number 31, find the standard form of the ellipse. Identify the center and the foci. All right, so we have 16x squared. You know what, let me get my proper pen out. 16x squared plus 25y squared plus 50y equals 375. I just added 375 to both sides. Uh, let's see, 16x squared, and then I'm going to factor 25 out. That's for completing the square, by the way. Uh, plus, whoops, I went too far there, didn't I? Uh, plus 2y, and that still equals 375. We're going to do half of the 2 is 1. Square it, you get 1. And we didn't add 1. We actually added 25 to both sides. What we're going to do now, divide both sides by 400. The reason to be that is we want that to be 1, and 375 plus 25 is 400. What do you get there? You get x squared. 16 goes into 400 25 times. 25 goes into 400 16 times. And y squared plus 2y plus 1 is a perfect square. What do you get there? You get 1. All right? This is standard form. I'm done with that. I can also write the center down now because it's in standard form. Easy to do, by the way. What's the center going to be? Well, 0, comma, minus 1. That's done. Foci, you might have to think about it, but the bottom line, you got a major axis. It's uh, horizontal, and I'll, I'll do this over here. There's going to be vertices over here. There's a center. What's the center going to be? 0, minus 1. And the foci, it's a difference between 25 and 16. Um, I'll write that down for you. 25 minus 16, and that would be what? 4 and 5, which is 9. So what's this? that's a C squared. <coughs> Excuse me. What's C going to be? 3. So you're going to go 3 this way, 3 that way. So the foci, all right, let's just be careful about that. And if you're at zero and you move three to the left, you're at minus three. And if you're at zero and move three to the right, you're at three now. Put a box in that and call that a day. Let's go to the next question. Next question is a summation. What I would recommend to do is not to expand it, but just to write down. Uh, we're starting at zero, so I know there's gonna be two factors for every term. Now, if you count from zero up to five, you're going to be counting six separate terms. So I'm going to be writing these terms down, and then I'll put the factors down for each of the six terms, and then I'll add them together. All right, well, actually, I'll multiply and then add together. So let's just do j minus one first. It's going to be minus one if you start zero, and then you're going to get uh, zero, and then get one, two, three, four. Now, if you have two j minus one, a little more complicated, that's going to be minus one. And this is going to go up by 2 now. So minus 1 up by 2 is 1. 1 up by 2 is going to be 3. Let's see, 3 up by 2 is 5. 5 up by 2 is 7. And 7 up by 2 is 9. I want to check the last one, make sure I did okay. on that. So uh, if you're at 5, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. Yeah, looks great. What do you get over here? 1, first term. Second term, 0. Third term is 3. Then you get a 10. Then you get a 21. And then you get, what, 4 times 9 is 36, right? Let's add together. Let's see, 1, 4, 14, 15, 25, 35, 65, 71. All right, that one's done. Let's go to the next question. And the next question, whoops, I don't go too fast. I knew, I went, sometimes I scroll too quickly, by the way. The next question is number 33. So in number 33, they say find a formula, all right? Now, they give me A1 and they give me A10. So A10 is 35. What does that mean? It's equal to A1, which is 110, plus, well, the 10th term would be 9 times the D. Let's figure out the D. And take 110 from both sides. You're going to get, uh, let me think about that. That's going to give you uh, minus 75. 65, yeah, 75, 9 D. And then it doesn't look that bad. D is going to be equal to minus 75 over 9. I'm going to reduce that, and that's minus 25 thirds. All right? I can write down an now. All right, find a formula for an. I'm going to do that. What's it going to be? a1, which is 110, plus n minus 1 times d, which is minus 25 thirds. All right, although I don't think it's a polite thing, that is an answer to it. I want to simplify it, though. And I think that's what you really should be doing. Common of 3. What would you get there? Uh, 330 and 25, which is 355. Let me just check that again. 3 times 110 is 330 and 25. Yeah, 355 
and then you get minus 25 n. And I put a box this one over here, all right? Again, we found a formula for a n. We're done with that. All right, this one's a trigonometric equation. I'm going to make some attempt to solve it. It's cosine of a double angle. That means it's going to be 2 cosine squared x minus 1 plus 3 cosine x plus 2 equals 0. Uh, let's see if we can get this to come together nicely. And plus 3 and then plus 1. I'm going to make some attempt to factor it. I'm going to say, hopefully it works out nice, right? So 2 cosine x, cosine x, a 1, and a 1, plus, plus. Let me just check it. You do get 2 cosine squared. You get 2 plus 1, which is 3 cosine x. Yeah, looks like pretty good. Uh, there's two possibilities over here. The cosine of x could equal minus 1 half for that product to be 0, or the cosine of x could equal minus 1. Just real brief about this. You draw a picture of the cosine curve. Looks like this over here. The first one here, the easy one to do is going to be just simply pi. And I just got to stick between 0 and 2 pi, by the way. Why is that? That's what they said over here. The other one, minus 1 half, I look at that over there. Looks like this over here. And there's two places where it occurs. In the first, I'm sorry, in the second and the third quadrant. What's the reference going to be, though? Let's take a look at that. The 1 half, that would be um, 60 degrees, all right? Now, 60 degrees is going to be pi over 3. That's the reference, by the way. I want to get the um, actual angle, by the way. The angle is going to be in the second quadrant with a reference of pi over 3, so that's going to be 2 pi over 3. And when I get into the third quadrant, that's going to be uh, 4 pi over 3. Okay, let's write this down now, and I'll write the set of numbers down. And I try to write this in order. Not that you have to, but it's nice if you can write things in order. So 2 pi over 3, uh, the next one's going to be pi, and the last one's going to be 4 pi over 3. Whoops, Get my eraser out. All right, that one's done. Let's go to the next question. And the next one says convert the polar equation to rectangular form. What I would do here is multiply both sides by r. You get r squared minus 4r cosine theta. R squared is x squared plus y squared. Let's see, uh, minus 4. And R cosine theta is just simply x. If that's your answer, that's your answer. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Not that you have to. Adding 4x to both sides. I'm going to complete the square. Half of 4 is uh, 2. Square it, you get plus 4. Add 4 to both sides. And this appears to be a circle. x plus 2 squared plus y minus 0 squared is equal to 2 squared, all right? Now, if that's your answer, that's fine, too, by the way. Either answer is fine. Now, granted, they didn't ask for it, but you could put down the center and radius, but they didn't ask for it. The center is going to be uh, minus 2, comma, 0, and the radius is just 2, all right? Rational number, uh, they won't berate this. My technique of doing this over here, like we did in class, is to say both sides, uh, you know, I don't know what this is, actually, that number over there. Multiply by 10, and what do you get? You get 12. 0.87. Now, the pattern of repetition is going to be 2. So we're going to multiply by 100 now. 100 times 10 is going to be 1,000. And 100 times 12.87 is 1287.87 repeats. I'm going to subtract these two. And what do you get? Well, you get 990x. That's not so bad. Now, I'm looking at this over here. And the subtraction doesn't look bad. All the decimals just disappear by. It's conversion series, by the way. You're going to get a 5, because 7 minus 2 is 5. And you're going to get a 7, because 8 minus 1 is uh, 7. And you get 1, 2. What's x equal to? Uh, 1, 2, 7, 5 over 9, 9, 0. By the way, if that's your answer, it's a fine answer. I want to reduce it. All right? And to reduce it, what I'm looking at, looks like those two numbers are divisible by a 5 and a 3. All right? So I'll put down 15 to cut, cut to the chase over here. 15 into 1, 2, 7, 5. Let's take a look at that. Uh, let's see. That's going to go in um, six times, right? So let's put this over here. Six times five is 30. Six times nine. Uh, did I make a mistake there? Fifteen. Oh, I'm sorry. It goes in eight times. I, I was going to say that's, that's not enough, is it? I'm actually thinking about the 990. So eight times. And eight times five is 80 and 40, which is 120. Subtract. You get 75. And 15 goes into 75 
five times. That's 50 and 25. So let's write that down. You're going to get, um, let's see, 85 on top. Let's do the 15 into 9, 9, 0. 6, 6 times 15, 30. I'm sorry, 60 and 30, um, which is a 90. Subtract another 6. You get 66, all right? That's your answer. That's fine, too, by the way. Either one's good, all right? They both equal um, the number uh, 1.287 and where the 87s are being repeated. All right, this one over here, it's a, um, it's a pa uh, parametric equation, and what they want you to do is they want you to rewrite it uh, by eliminating the parameter over there. And once I do that, it should be a more recognizable problem for me. And the way I would do that, I would take away um, 3 from both sides and divide by 4 and you get cosine of t. Here I would take away 5 from both sides and divide by 4, and I get this over here, all right? Now, granted, I wouldn't be using arc functions. It's kind of crazy to do that. But the bottom line, what I would do is I'd square both sides now. And what do you get? x minus 3 over 4. Quantity squared would be equal cosine squared of t. And y minus 5 over 4 squared would equal sine squared of t. I would add these two things together, and you get this over here. And the reason for adding these together are Pythagorean identities. All right, when you get up there, well, it looks like a circle again. And why is that? This is equal to 1. It's going to be x minus 3 squared plus y minus 5 squared. The bottom would be 16, but I can multiply both sides by 16. And I'll put a little box in this one over here, indicating that's an answer, by the way. Uh, by the way, you, you could also write down, if you don't want to do that, you could leave the x minus 3 over 4. Maybe I should write that down for you. So x minus 3 over 4 squared plus y minus 5 over 4 squared is equal to 1. And if you want to do that, you could. That's also another possibility. But again, I don't think it looks right. I think this one is the one that looks right. But that's fine. That gets full credit. All right, this one says find the standard form of the equation of the parabola with the given characteristics. Uh, I'm going to draw a little tiny picture first. And to do that, I'm going to just put this uh, vertex down, which is minus 1, minus 3, 1, 2, 3. And then the directory is minus 6. And so it's over here somewhere. Let's see if I wrote that down good. Yeah, I did. I know the parabola, it looks sort of like this over here. I got a rough picture. What I know about it, the form of the parabola is going to be, uh, let's see, y plus 3 squared equals 4p x plus 1. Now, what's the p? I got to figure out this distance over here. And what do I see over there? This is, the p is positive, by the way. It opens to the right. The uh, p is, uh, let's see, if this is minus 1 and that's minus 6, this would be 5 units. So let's write this down, and then I'll put a box on it. 4 times 5, x plus 1. And if that's the way you wrote it down, full credit. If you want to simplify it a little bit, I wouldn't go too far with this over here because it becomes increasingly difficult if you're not writing it in a standard form, by the way. And it says standard form. Both of these would be considered, in my book, to be standard forms at the Math 119 level, by the way. All right, let's go. I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. Fourth times five is not 20. I'm not 40, it's 20. Let me erase that. I just noticed that. And I'm glad I'm, I'm looking uh, as I go through the problem set that I'm, uh, I'm not uh, making too many errors, by the way. Four times five is 20. All right, let me go to the next one and uh, make sure I'm not going too far with this. Oh, the numerical coefficient now. So I'm going to say I have to be careful here because it's a binomial expansion. And I'm going to, you know, maybe write this as x plus minus 2y, and that's to the ninth power. And then I'm going to put dot, 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 plus, there'll be a coefficient, and there's two things to go here. What's it going to be? x, and it's going to be minus 2y. All right? So what do I know? They, x is going to be 6. That's, that's going to give that to me. And what's the other exponent going to be? It's going to be 3. All right, that's 9. So it's 9. Now, you could either write a 6 or a 3. I'm going to put a 6 over here. All right, I got to, I got to do the work over here because they want the numerical coefficient. And I'll write this down for you now. It's going to be 9, 6, uh, 1 to the 6th power, and then it's going to be minus 2 to the 3rd power. If that's your idea of a number, by the way, it's fine by me. I don't think it's a good idea to do that, but you could do that. I'm going to do some arithmetic over here. 
So 9 factorial, which is going to be 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, and I'm going to stop there. What's on the bottom? 6 factorial, and then 3 factorial. 3, 2, 1. Uh, 1 to the 6th power, which is 1, and minus 2 cubed is going to be minus 8. So 6 factorial disappears. Let's see if we can do this. 3 goes into 3 once, it goes into 9 3 times. 2 goes into 2 once, it goes into 8 4 times. So what do I get here? 3 times 4 is 12. And then I get 7 times minus 8, which is minus 56. All right? I'm going to do that multiplication, and I hope it's not too bad. So I'm going to do 10 times minus 56. I know it's a negative number. So I'll just put this over here. 10 times 56 is 560. And then 2 times 56 is going to be um, 112. I'm going to add those two numbers together. And that's going to be a negative number, of course. Let's see, you're going to get uh, 6, 7, 2. So minus 6, 7, 2. Both numbers are acceptable to me. All right, this is an infinite geometric sum. Uh, you may not want to trust them on that, but certainly I'm going to uh, not trust them. I'm going to say, I wonder what R is. And R is the um, common ratio between the terms, by the way. Like, you know, how, how does 9 halves get to be 27 eighths, or how does 6 be 9 halves, or how does 8 become 6? So I'm going to do uh, 6 and 8, and I'm going to say uh, 6 over 8. And what's that give me? Divide by 2, you get 3 quarters. Let's just check it out. 8 times 3 quarters, that's going to be 2. Yep, that gives me 6. Let me do 6 times 3 quarters now, see if it gives me the next term, by the way. What do you get over there? That reduces. And I'm going to reduce by 2. You get 3 times 3 over 2, which is 9 halves. Gee, that worked. Let's do the next one, which is 9 halves by the common ratio of 3 quarters. What do you get over there? That would get 27 a. So it looks pretty good. So a1 is 8, and r is going to be 3 quarters. This is an infinite geometric sum, and that's going to be a1, which is going to be 8, times 1 over 1 minus r, and R is 3 quarters. Now, granted, if that's your answer, that's your answer. I think it looks terrible, by the way. I'm going to rewrite it. When you get over here, 8 times, multiply top and bottom by 4, you get 4, and you get 4 minus 3. Well, 4 minus 3 is 1, so I'm really left with 8 times 4, which is 32. And you really should be writing 32 down, by the way. All right? So let's go to the next question. See, I'm not going too far, by the way. I don't want to go into it because I give you two examples. That, that's it. We got it all done, by the way. All right, thank you. Let me just count it up, by the way. Um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Let's say I didn't make any mistakes. I got 100%. Thanks for paying attention.